for, for training, and, and particularly this activity. And I want to see if my hypothesis plays itself out to be true. And so um, I would like, if anyone ha has written down their gender as one of those five things that's important to you, please raise your hand. If your gender was one of those five things that is important to you. Okay, so nobody raised their hand. All right, please raise your hand if um, your race or ethnicity was one of those five things that you wrote down in your piece of paper. Uh, please raise your hand if, if that was one of the five things. Okay. Please uh, raise your hand if your socioeconomic status was one of those five things that you wrote down on your paper. Please raise your hand. I saw money. I have money, though. Yeah, money. Is that the same thing as your socioeconomic status? No. No? Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> because I would have denied it if, it if it did, because it doesn't prove my hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 you know, my basic hypothesis, you know, or, or my question, my core question is, why do you think that, that our, our race didn't show up, our gender didn't show up, and our socioeconomic didn't show up as one of those five things that, that is important to us? Why do you think that is? We take it for granted. We take it for granted. Doesn't matter. And ultimately, it's not that important. I think some of those differences that, that we see or, or the illusions of differences are more important to other people than they necessarily are to us. Now, what I'm not saying is that uh, the color of my skin, the, the kinkiness of my hair, and the whiteness of my nose should be ignored. I'm not saying we should ignore that. Because people will say goofy stuff like, people are people to me. I don't see color. I'm colorblind. Right? Have you ever heard someone say those, those kinds of things? Right. When I hear people say that, I say, you're not colorblind. You're crazy. Because you see the differences between people, right? You see the, 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 the color of their hair. You see the, 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 the hue of their skin. You see, you know, how tall they are, how under tall they are. Um, you, you, you see those things. But seeing those things is not a problem. It's natural. It's how we make distinctions between things. The problem comes in the values we associate with those things that we see. When we, we, we make automatic judgments about individuals and we carry that as a lifelong philosophy as opposed to a point of information. All right? So um, what I would encourage you to, to do is to think about all the ways that we are, uh, we are connected and all the ways that we want similar, similar things. All right, so we will continue. So what, what is going on in this picture? What do you see in this picture? This is a, a picture called American Girl in Italy. It was taken in 1951. Uh, it's, a, it's a famous um, picture. What's going on in this picture? She's being admired. She's being admired. Okay. She's being harassed. She's being harassed. The wolves are after her. The wolves are after her. I think she's bad and she knows it. You think she's bad and she knows it? Well, men have too them. much time on their hands. These men have way too much time on their hands. Where are they all? She's in a male dominated place. She's in a male dominated place. Yeah. How does she feel? Irritated? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. I don't know. She's scared. You thought she looked confident or scared? Mm -hmm. How do you know? It's 1951. She's feeling admired. Okay, 1951. She's feeling admired because in 1951, your daughter. Yeah. 1951, she's not going to make an issue of it. Okay, so, so she's definitely not going to make an issue of it in 1951, whether she's being admired or not, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say this is modern day, and let's say this is your daughter. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they need to get out. 
<laughs> they, they need to leave now. <laughs> they need to leave now. Your daughter needs to leave that situation, go someplace yeah. else. Okay, cool. I, I, I like using this because there are different, definitely different ways we can look at that. Um, my, my core question, you know, essentially is, in looking at this, this picture, is she being given dignity and honor, or are they trying to take away her dignity and honor? Is she a person, or is she a thing? And I can't make that decision for you, but, but I find those questions very interesting as we talk about micro inequities. Because what micro inequities do is they, they chip away the humanity that, that people have so that we end up with a thing. And what happens when we take away people's humanity and make them a thing? The Holocaust happens. Slavery happens. Uh, sex trafficking happens. When we take away people's humanity and they become things. Right? And so micro inequities are those small processes that we don't even really think about that, that engage us in the process of turning people into things. Right? A, a lot of us, um, you know, and it's so funny because the government oftentimes tries to uh, act like we're a for-profit entity so that we get tons of data and we analyze that data and we, we dissect that data and, tell, and we look for what that data tells us. But all the data that we're using are actually what? Human beings. People with stories and lives and reasons and illogical decisions that they make. And oftentimes it, it becomes real easy for professionals like us to forget that we are dealing with real flesh and blood. All right? So, um, I don't want to pull you out, so let's keep moving. Um, just, just so you know, I'm going to give you some, some background. Um, because I work a lot with discrimination and, and how do we alleviate discrimination. And we go straight to the jugular on, on discrimination because there are laws that support you know, uh, decreasing that kind of stuff. And there are protected classes, right? So there are people that we say we will, that the law um, says that we cannot harm in certain specific kinds of ways, right? And so, um, you know, discrimination is broken into two categories. There is harassment. Um, and then there is retaliation. Retaliation is something we can talk about later, but I just want to talk a little bit about the, um, there's the, the race, the obvious kinds of stuff, right? So the, the race stuff, there's the, the gender orientation uh, and, and gender stuff. There's the, uh, the religion and, and, and creed kind of stuff. There are, there's the age discrimination. And then finally, there is the um, disability stuff, right? Both short-term, long-term, and, um, and temporary disabilities, right? Um, and so those are the, the protected classes that our laws work to, uh, to defend, right? So we legislate how people can act around these protected classes. So. Our, excuse me, are protected classes defined by state? They're defined by federal law. Okay. Yep. So, uh, and I, I had a couple of, of, of versions of, uh, of some key pieces. So the, the Civil Rights Act of 1968, not just dealt with, and, and a lot of people get confused um, about the Civil Rights Act because they think it just pertained to African Americans, but it didn't. Uh, African Americans were a part of a larger spectrum of folks who were protected by the, the 1968 Civil Rights Act. And before that, there, there were um, other acts that, that followed, like um, the, the Women's uh, Right to Vote Act, and I can't remember the date, but I have it in, in one of my presentations. And so there were a lot of other things that came. Um, and then the most profound and sweeping, it, most people don't necessarily recognize, was the, uh, the 1991 ADA. And the ADA really changed how we look at um, diversity in a different kind of way. So, um, so those are some, some things, and those are federal laws. Uh, sometimes states can have um, more stringent policies or, or more um, proactive policies, but they can't have less than what the federal government says. Um, so, so there's that. I'm going to show this short clip, and um, 
and talk about the micro inequities that we might see in this, in this clip. Too many buttons. 